Right, jet setters. So it's uh, midday Monday Australian time, Sunday night US time. Uh, so this is my, my rough routine when I look at things um, for the week. I've got to actually scrub out and start again. Uh, so this is the S and P. It always uh, is that one. I mean, this this is basically you know a daily, right? And um, if you've seen this before, I like these area charts you don't see them very often but to me it really does just crystallize <clears throat> the division between what's above and what's below I find that helpful so there's these uh, points overboard overboard it touches not quite overboard but getting there touches very overboard touches so when I look at a trend um, it's a very strong trend when those touches are on, you know, coincide with those um, various RSIs. Now on the downside, this is the million dollar question. It's very hard, you know, I remember drawing that one, drawing this one, right? And it broke, and arguably it's done this, right? Back tested. Then I thought, well actually, maybe, you know, given the way it rebounded here, Maybe this is the new norm, right? Um, and frankly, the jury is really out. Um, so this bottom trend line, it's very ambiguous and it's not clear and you can draw it any way you please, really, because, you know, that touch, you know, it's like oversold. This one's an important one, very oversold. Um, and I guess this one catches 100% of the moves. This one... Well, this catches, I guess, like, you know, <laughs> well, 90% of the moves. And I guess it does pick up a little bit better where the oversolds have happened. These will show up like on a four hourly time frame, you know, more, more clearly. So I'm gonna scrub that one, it really is difficult. Um, mind you, the other thing that I'm seeing very clearly is that level and if that goes then I'm seeing um, this level 42.50 let's zoom in a little bit closer right now the other thing that we see pretty clearly here like is this little double bottom there and the battle is on to see what happens with this, it's stepping down you know, really quite nicely. I've been short equity risk um, um, back from here, right? Um, and it's stepping down. This is quite telling. I, I'm a bit of a believer in the, the, you know, the gang of threes. When you see like an oversold um, um, and then uh, you know, the, the divergent, the negative divergence, right? So we're getting lower prices on stronger RSI, I don't know, maybe this positive divergence, I don't know, it's divergence anyway. Um, that's happened three times where we've had a bottom, but on slightly stronger momentum. So that is quite telling as a floor in the market, 4,500. Given that it's broken this one though, I'm a little um, bit skeptical about how well that's gonna hold, um, but it is, the battle is on. You can see it there clearly on the four hourly. What's going to happen? Um, wild night on Friday. So that's the the US equity market. I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, this move where it kind of pulled back. Um, I was I've been calling it at this level, which it did, and it's still there, give or take a little bit. No idea where it's going to go next. Frankly, really, absolutely no goddamn idea. And frankly, the technicals don't give you any guidance at all. As I've said before, technical analysis is largely reading tea leaves. It's kind of slightly bullshitish. But this is a trend I'm watching and this level, if this level breaks, that will be quite key. And I'd say if it does, good chance of it falling very quickly, 250 points. If it bounces up, I'm not convinced. Um, there's that one, right? Let's... Uh, have a look at the, um, let's just have a look at the, the other US equity markets, see what springs out. Um, 
Right. You know, to me, this is this spells like Dow's like in a bit of a range. Um, it's a bit odd. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. I'd probably say it's a bit more of a floor around there, around that um, thirty-three and a half thousand. Um, it's not looking overly toppy to me. It might have done its dash. I'm not sure. That one's a bit indecisive. Um, the Nasdaq. Let's have a look at the Nasdaq. Where is it? There we go. Yeah. Now this one. I'll look at the Nasdaq on a log scale, just because the, the the moves that it's been on have been a bit. You know, they've been a bit more exaggerated. Although it is a, a line ball call, and really the scheme things, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, right? Um, I think that the support around there is a bit more decisive. This is the target. I'd say it's broken this one. Good chance there. And I'd say with this going, that will take the S&P with it. So that's one of the reasons why I'm not so enthusiastic about the S&P being able to hold its ground with this hangover. It won't be pretty. And another factor behind that is where these yields are heading. This is the US two years. So you can see that um, it has broken this level here. All right. A bit of a go, came back through it, um, and it's potentially off. If it goes, right, that's it. Um, that's 90 points, that's from like 61 up to 130, you know, off a base of essentially zero, right? So that, in, in terms of the way technical and price action you kind of look at it, those big moves um, have a really good chance of retracing. And in case you haven't seen this before, when you look at the bigger picture of this, right, um, you know, um, there is a long, it's going back to 1990, right? There's a long term tr pattern and trend of this thing, um, the way it rebounds. Um, for it to go back to here, you can see in the scheme of things, it's a quite a sensible level for it to come back to. It's always been a bit of noise there. Um, but in the scheme of things, it's not a big move and it could easily ratchet back up to this level. If it does, can you imagine the windows that are going to explode in financial in equity markets if we went back to three percent? Currently, certainly three percent. You know that's really in line with the general ex expectation of longer-term inflation, right? So even at three percent, you know you've got zero real interest rates at least on a two-year horizon. And although this sounds a long way off, it's actually not. That would really kick the teeth in of a lot of equity investors. Um, let's have a look at the, the, oh, actually, before we do that, a um, couple of interesting things as well. We look on the, the, the candles. Um, this on the um, on the S&P. Um, Gravestone, if you believe, if you're into these things, that's a very bearish um, signal. Mind you, this is an engulfing, monthly bearish candle, which don't, doesn't happen very often, right? And when it does, it signals a lot of sideways to down price action, generally down. I was quite surprised that it rebounded so strongly the next month. That's an engulfing bullish, right? So that's, you know, it, it's on for young and old again, right? This, though, is um, a really sign, is a general signal of a turning point. Having said that, <laughs> it didn't happen there, did it? <laughs> nah, that's not such a good one. Didn't really happen there. Um, let's see if we can find any other ones. Look, I can't see, no, that's not one. Uh, you know, maybe, no, nah, not really. Um, yeah, there, there's one. That's not a bad, that's a good example. We had like an engulfing um, uh, bearish candle, an engulfing bullish, then a gravestone, um, and then it's off, right? So, you know, let's just keep in mind 1998. <laughs> Go back 22 years, see if history repeats. Yeah, good luck. Um, anyway, 
that would be funny. Anyway, so that's looking a little bit uh, ordinary on the monthly. On the it's looking pretty pretty weak um, on the um, S and P. You know, not so much. Um, but you can see it is kind of rolling over there. Um, when we look at the Australian share market, let's go to that one. The Australian share market on those ones, it's been very indecisive, very weak. Look at this. That's a real like we don't know whether we're Arthur or Martha, you know, kind of situation. That's the one that I've been short um, equity risk by the Australian market, um, this whole move there. Um, so that's the um, equity markets. You can see in Australia, this is an important level here, around 71.50. And if we go back, yeah, if we go back, we can see that it's right there, okay? So the Australian market, I'm watching that level. If it breaks, it's a bit of a, could be a bit of a disaster. Um, I really do think that's the situation with the Australian share market bit clearer than the um, US one and it is still trending ever so slightly downwards so that's why I'm still short uh, equity market by Australia I think that looks weak um, not a bad proxy for the S&P the S&P um, said when I look down on a smaller time frame we can see this is um, you know, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. Uh, a bit of a tail there. This is the level to watch. Um, I did do a couple of trades in the S and P. Um, you know, bought it here around about 40 or something. Sold it around about forty six hundred bit higher. Um, we played for the long side. That was the other night. Um, I'm square at the S&P at the moment. If it goes a little bit higher, um, I will lob, uh, lob something out um, to see, just to play that range, just because I think I want to be positioned for it to go further lower. Uh, currency, so I've been sure the Aussie dollar, um, that's been going well. I mean, this is, you know, compared to trading the um, equity markets, the currency is just a walk in the walk in the park. Um, you just look at the way in which it has continually stepped down. You know, forms a low, breaks it, comes back and retests it. Forms a low, breaks it, comes back, and retests it. You know, that's really what it's done the whole way. Like forms a low, breaks it, hasn't back tested it yet, right? So I do expect it could rebound as much as up to a cent. I'm still short. Um, I've been thinking about squaring up um, because when you look on the Bollinger Bands, it's um, to be overstretched on that. Um, on the, what's it look like on the dailies? Yeah, oversold on the dailies, heavily out. Um, yeah, not really outside, not as far as that one. Um, yeah, I'm. I really should square that up, um, given that it's that heavily oversold. Um, I am a little bit, this is one of those things as a trader where it's, it's, it's a tricky call because I do trade according to these RSIs a fair bit and they have been pretty successful for me. And it's certainly um, on a very strong line of long-term support and resistance. Um, so I think the trade here actually is to buy it back. Um, if it keeps going then sell as it, as it breaks down. Um, and that's a tricky one. Chasing a falling market from a short end is, um, is very difficult because they snap back and you get stopped out and you don't know whether it's doing a V-shaped bottom or just um, a bit of an elasticity on the way down. Um, that is quite a tricky one. The next stop would be there. So, um, and that, no, it's like three cents. So I'd say if I bought it here and it started to flush down further, I'd probably have a good chance to get 
maybe not all three of those cents, but maybe two and a half. So I think that's what I'm going to do on that. We'll see how that goes. Um, it's still looking pretty weak, but it might have just had its dash in the short term. Um, what else? Oh, gold. Let's have a look at gold. I always love looking at gold. I love looking at gold because all the clowns out there that say it's going to go to a gazillion. <laughs> <laughs> um, gold, I'm convinced you got to look at it like on a you, you, look. You got to look at it on a longer term time frame, right? And as you can see, there's like there's that, right? Wash out that noise if you want to include it. You know, fine, whatever. I generally kind of like go to nuke it. He's doing this, all right? Which as you've seen in, me talk about before. It's the same as this, right? You know, like that. Again, you can draw like that, you can draw like that. Whatever, right? You can draw that top line wherever you want, but it is generally like the lows are getting, the highs are getting lower, and the lows are reasonably constant, right? So here we go. The highs, the kind of lows, it's had these kind of cons consistent lows here, and as, but along here, the highs have been getting lower. And as with a big run up, it does this, narrows down, and then it cracks. And of course, where it cracked was when rates started to tick up, two year rates, where it peaked was when rates were at a record low, um, you know, August 2011, August 2020, and you go back to the old US two year chart, and we see it is literally, it's almost to the day when you look at it on a, on a, on a finer time scale. Um, you know, you know, there was like, you know, um, was it 2011, did I say? Yeah, 2011, right? August 2011, where was that? 2011, right. August 2011, there we go. That's this point here, right? <laughs> and when it started to, 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 as rates started to tick up, that's when it kind of tanked. Um, here, you know, August 2020, where's that? August 2020, here, right? Basically, when rates kind of like really bottomed down there and they've been trending up ever since. Um, the fact that gold is still where it is, despite this going on, to me, that is the, um, that's the Bitcoin mentality um, flowing into the gold market. Uh, gold should be lower um, and it will be lower, I'm convinced. I'm sure the two year bonds, I think that's the, for me, that's a less volatile transaction. Speaking of volatility, here of course is uh, Bitcoin, um, which, um, <laughs> you know, how do you want to draw this, right? On one le level is that, right? Um, and you could say, look, you know, on this basis, it's going to 300,000. <laughs> yeah, right, whatever. Um, the other, I mean, you could kind of draw this one a bit there, I guess, and that probably makes them a bit of a parallel channel. Um, but it also means it could go down to 15,000, right? <laughs> Take your pick. So it's at 48, could go to like 15, could go to 3,000, 300, right? Now that's why you need to look at these things on a log basis, right? Because um, it's all about percentages of changes. But that's the sort of two way that we're looking at, right? If you say, where, what's the top side? The top side is like 300,000, right? The bottom is like 15,000. And that's just on the range, right? Um, but one thing's for sure is when you look at these overboughts on the monthlies, this is what happens. 85% pullback, right? Let's look at this overbought on the monthly, right? It's that one. 85% pullback. Right? This overbought on the monthly, not as much, not heavily overbought as that. Where'd it go? It went from there. 62% pullback. <laughs> this one, let's have a look where that could take us, right? Uh, right, so a 66% pullback or whatever would get us to 20,000, 20, right? An 80% pullback would take us to the bottom of the range, you know? So, look, I think that's it's more likely that Bitcoin's going to go to like, you know, you know, 15 to 20,000, right? Um, based on what's happened in the past, then 300,000. And it did have that r ridiculous um, 
uh, people call it flash crash or whatever. I mean, look, <laughs> look at that. This is a trillion dollar investment with no, no fundamental, no, no asset backing. There's no asset backing to this thing, right? No assets. Its intrinsic value is zero. This is what it's done. This, well look, it could roll over, it could come back. The problem, the thing is, you don't know, right? Or it's just a bunch of like, you know, people out there, conspiracy theorists saying, oh, it's a standout buy on all their, their groups, right? Um, this is looking um, to me, as I said, I'm, I'm not in it, right? Uh, never have been, never will. Um, I just like, I mean, I guess it's important because when the toilet flushes here, it'll flow over to other markets, such as gold, right? Um, because people have been using Bitcoin as a, you know, same mentality as gold investors, right? And they believe that, you know, the old currencies tradition are going to end, and so they buy stuff. Um, was gold, now it's Bitcoin. Um, what else? Oh, the dollar index. A lot of people have been talking about the dollar index. Some people say this is a leading indicator and you've really got to watch it, right? No, sorry, not the dollar index. I mean the VIX. Um, oh, the dollar index is it's going up. Um, they said, long the dollar index five being short the Aussie. Um, the short the Aussie is, is kind of good for me because I'm more familiar with it and the RBA's moves and also it's a proxy for the commodities at the same time. Sort of like the CAD, the RAND, the Real, a lot of macro hedge funds will trade them as, as a basket. The funny is with the VIX, right? It's, it's a leading indicator. It's a leading indicator, mate. It is not, right? It is not a leading indicator. The VIX is backed out of option prices which are trading, right? And the option prices change when, right, when the market moves, right? Volatility traders don't all of a sudden jack up vol, right, from 15% up to 30% because they know the market's gonna tank. They don't do it, they see the market tanking and then they jack up the prices. So the only rationale in looking at the VIX is if you are buying or selling options as a vol play, right, then there's better value in terms of the premium you pay if you're buying it down here. If you're like me and you sell options, right? For me, this is a great time to sell options and you get some really good premium for the risk. So this is when the smart option traders, like think that's me, start selling options into the market, right? Because what happens, it goes up because retail people start buying them, right? Retail people, they see the market moving, they wanna buy up because they wanna buy, typically they wanna buy puts, right, when the market's moving. Um, and then it all comes down. Um, so it's not some leading indicator. Um, it is just a good indicator of where options are actually trading in the market um, on a whole, as a whole, and specifically just the SPX options, this one, or the, the index options. Um, you know, for me, this is a nice time to start selling options, which I do, like, you know, cover calls, naked puts. You know, that's basically my, my risk appetite. Um, look, uh, I think that's about about it. I'm I'm still short the bonds, twos, threes, tens in, in different currencies. Still short the Aussie, although I think I'm probably going to square that up. Uh, and um, short equity risk via the Aussie market, which I'm watching carefully. And the um, S and P, I've just got a very close eye on this trend here to see how that is going to unfold, whether this double bottom holds or whether that trend um, holds and it grinds down. Uh, anyway, look, that's about it. Have a good week. Catch you later. Ciao.